Welcome to worship this morning. You're invited to stand and join in our processional hymn. You may be seated. Welcome in the name of our risen and present Savior, Jesus Christ. It is he who has called you here through his word. A special welcome to those that may be visiting with us today. Uh, just a quick word about communion. If you know your need of forgiveness and you believe that Christ is truly present in the bread and wine, you are welcome at his table. Our worship begins this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You may kneel as you are able or remain seated for the confession. Do you confess that you are, because of your fallen human nature, a sinner unworthy of God's favor? Do you desire to be saved from eternal condemnation? Confess your sins, therefore, and plead, Almighty God, to have mercy.
Heavenly Father, I confess God did not send his Son into the world to condemn you, but that you might be saved through him. By the suffering and death of Jesus Christ, your sins are graciously and completely forgiven. And by his resurrection, you have new life in him. Amen. Praise grace, God, God. Please stand. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God the Father and Jesus Christ, our Lord. We share a sign of these gifts with each other. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, with you there is You may be seated. The first lesson is from Genesis, the third chapter. Adam and Eve heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman, he said, I will surely multiply your pain and childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. And to Adam, he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat it. Cursed is the ground of you because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken. For you are dust, and to dust you shall return. The word of the Lord. Be the second lesson is the 130th Psalm. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. 
If you, O Lord, shall mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, that you may be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than the watchman for the morning, more than watchman for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is plentiful and redemption. And he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. The word of the Lord. Kids can come on up, come on up for the children's message. Yeah, come on up. I see you. I see you. Oh, you guys sure look nice today, huh? Dressed up for a special Sunday. Say, have any of you ever gotten in trouble before? <laughs> One, he didn't voluntarily raise his hand. Do you think Joey's ever gotten in trouble before? No way. I never get in trouble. You think he never gets in trouble? No, he's gotten in trouble. You know why, too, don't you? Why? Well, I didn't do it. I didn't even say what. I don't care what it is. I didn't do it. Well, he thinks he's innocent. I am. Oh, no, you're not. Well, sometimes we get in trouble, right? And when we get in trouble, are we afraid? I am. Who are you afraid of? You. <laughs> why? Because you're going to hurt me. Oh, come on, I'm not going to hurt you. Well, you might take my chocolate away, and that hurts. <laughs> well, sometimes when we get in trouble, we're afraid, because we, we are afraid of getting punished, right? We're afraid very often of our mom and dad, right? Because sometimes they'll punish us for getting in trouble. Yep. Well, we don't have to be afraid, because our moms and dads love us, and even if they punish us for doing wrong, they will always, always love us. And that's what God is like. When we get in trouble, we don't have to be afraid of God, but we should go to God and say, God, I'm sorry for what I did. Please forgive me. And do you think he'll forgive you? I think so. I think you're right. Yeah, I think he's right too. Yep. God will forgive. And if you ever have a question about that, all you have to do is look at a cross. And that is the guarantee that God forgives you because of what Jesus did for you on the cross. Hmm? So you don't have to be afraid of God because God loves you. And he is going to forgive you and he'll give you a new chance. Hmm? Sounds good. Yeah, it sounds great. Shall we say a prayer this morning? Can you repeat after me? Dear God, Thank you for your son who died for us so we don't have to be afraid. Keep us always in your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We stand for the hearing of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus went home, and the crowd gathered again so that they could not even eat. And when his family heard it, they went out to seize him, for they were saying, He is out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem were saying, He is possessed by Beelzebul, and by the prince of demons he casts out demons. And he called them to him and said to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? 
If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but is coming to an end. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. Then indeed he may plunder his house. Truly, I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the children of man and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they were saying, he has an unclean spirit. And his mother and brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. And a crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. And he answered them, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking about at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of our Lord. You, you may be seated. Dear friends in Christ and my nine confirmation students, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus the Christ. Amen. Have you eaten of the tree I commanded you not to eat? Well, it was the woman that you gave me. Adam blames his wife and blames God. And the very first household, the household of, of Adam and Eve, united by God's own presence, now suffers division. It was her. It was you. And the house that is divided against itself cannot stand. You know, Adam and Eve had began. They had started out in fear, love, and trust of God. The same disposition toward God that we ask to receive by God's grace. But it wasn't very long before the trust of God was called into question by the adversary, the serpent, the craftiest of all God's creatures. Did God really say that you shall not eat from that tree? You know, if you read through that story, you may find yourself wondering, why did the, the serpent speak to Eve and not Adam? And you know, the best answer I've heard is that Adam would have been way too easy. <laughs> way too simple. At least Eve presented the ser serpent with a challenge. Hmm? She had paid attention in Sunday school. God did say we are not to eat the fruit of that tree or even touch it or we shall die. Well, the crafty one, the serpent, must have just chuckled to himself knowing the game was on. And he again calls God's trustworthiness into question. You're not going to die. God just doesn't want you to be like him, knowing good and evil. And that second time, and a quick glance at that tree and the beautiful fruit, to ponder for just a moment the wisdom that could come with taking that fruit. That's all it took and it was game over. Adam just stands there asking if there's ice cream to go with the apple pie. Well, much to the chagrin of the serpent, it's not just the house of Adam and Eve that fall. The whole thing falls. All of creation is subjected to futility through that first sin. And the serpent gets it as well. He gets a diet of dust, loses his legs, and will have to crawl around on his belly. And, even more, can count on getting his head crushed by the seed of the woman, which is a very unusual phrase if you don't go past it too quickly. It said, 
offspring in our translation, but the Hebrew word is more accurately translated seed, the seed of the woman. Well, without being too graphic, it's the male that is usually referred to as having the seed in the reproductive scheme of things, not the female. So what is God saying by the seed of the woman? And most biblical scholars have taken this as a foretelling already here in creation in the very beginning of the conception of Jesus without the will or working of a male. And he it is, this miraculously conceived one who would come to crush the head of the serpent. And it is that same one who gives the scribes and us a lesson about division and Satan's work. No house divided against itself will be able to stand, he said. And a fallen house is precisely what Satan wants to see. Why? Because it is the household. It is man and woman joined as one flesh that bears the image of God. Right from creation, God said, let us make mankind in our image, male and female, he created them. They bore our image, God said. So Satan figures if he can cause division in this union, it won't be long before the house falls, so that is precisely where he attacks. You know, I point this out to every pre-marriage couple that I counsel. And I point it out for two reasons. First of all, when difficulties come, I tell those couples not to consider those difficulties as me against you, but rather us against the adversary because it is the adversary who is trying to cause that division. And second, I tell them this because as bearers of the image of God, the mother and father, whether they consciously choose to or not, will form an idea of what God is in the minds and hearts of their little ones, usually within the first three years of life. Think of the weight of responsibility that comes with that. You are bearing God's image to those tiny human beings. Now, that may come as a hard word. And do not condemn yourself if you think you haven't passed the test. We are, all of us, sinners. And none of us bear that image perfectly. But because of Christ, God is able to forgive our sins, to correct our errors, and to restore his image out of love for those children. And interestingly enough, it is you he will call on to do the restoring and correction of that image. And now, just for a second, I speak to the children although they are quickly leaving childhood and steaming towards adulthood. But I speak to my confirmands this morning. I want to speak to my own children this morning. And really, since each of us have a mother and father, there is a child that remains in each one of us. So I guess I'm speaking to all of you. But specifically now, although your parents have carried the image of God, they are sinners, and sometimes they mar that image. So here's what you need to do. You need to forgive them. Hmm? Do not let Satan divide your house with accusations and strife, but realize it is not you against your parents. It is you together with your parents against that adversary. But don't be afraid because you don't fight alone. You don't have to stand alone as a family against the devil. In fact, as that beautiful hymn that the praise band and 
we sang earlier puts it, did we in our own strength confide, our striving would be losing. We're not the right man on our side. Who is on our side? Christ Jesus, Lord Sabaoth, his name. Sabaoth, what on earth is that? <laughs> Word we don't use in English. Literally, it is armies or hosts. Christ Jesus is the captain of the army of angels, and he fights on your side. And he will crush the serpent's head. So you need not fear. Now, of course, this isn't to say that everything is all done for you and me, and there's no more battles to fight. It does, however, say that the eternal outcome is guaranteed and secured. Of that, you can be absolutely sure. And it is just that outcome, eternal life and victory in Christ, that you may keep anchored deep in your hearts when you find yourself in the depths, when you are walking through the valley of the shadow of death, whether your own or a loved one's, when you're standing at the grave. Hmm? Keep that eternal victory in life anchored in your hearts in those dark times and cry out with the psalmist, Lord, hear my voice. Just be sure that you aren't crying out to some unknown, unseen, and unheard God. Some vague notion that you can find either out there in nature somewhere or somewhere within yourself in the dark recesses of your mind or your sin-stained heart. Don't go looking in those places. Instead, be a brother or sister to Christ who does the will of the Father. And what is the will of the Father? Right here, John chapter 6, verse 40, Jesus said, Here is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life. All you have to do is look at Jesus. You look to him, you believe in him, and God's will is done in you. So to wrap up this confirmation, these two years for you guys, and to wrap this message up and present it as a gift to you, I want to distill it down to what I think is it, its purest essence. Three things. The first commandment, you shall have no other gods before me. The second article of the creed, which is about Jesus Christ and his work for us. And third, the sacrament of baptism. The first commandment, in his explanation from the large catechism, you guys have studied the small, but there is a large one. In the explanation of the first commandment, Luther said, what does it mean to have a God? Or what is God? And he said, a God is that from which we expect all good things and in which we take refuge in distress. Where do you turn? In the simplest of terms, you turn to God. And this ties perfectly with what Jesus said is the will of the Father, that you look to him. Look to the God that you can see in Christ Jesus for all good things as well as for refuge in distress. Next, the second article of the creed, Jesus Christ has redeemed me, a lost and condemned creature, purchased me. He has bought you from sin, death, and hell. And what was the price? He bought you with his blood, with his lifeblood. Why? So that you can be his. Your salvation is not a project you have to complete, or a trophy you have to win. Your salvation is pure gift, purchased by Christ Jesus at the cost of his lifeblood, given to you joyfully by God the Father, and no one and nothing can take it from you. And then last of all, baptism. After all, confirmation the actual title is Affirmation of Baptism. And to affirm something basically is to say yes or amen, which means this is the truth. 
Now, as I mentioned, your salvation is given to you as a gift, but it's no secret that its fullness and completion will not be realized by you until that baptism is done. It wasn't done when you were a little baby. It was begun then, but it is continued every day of your life until it is completed in your death because you are baptized into the death of Christ so that as Jesus Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, you too will have a new life. As Paul said to the Romans, if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. So, fear not, something Jesus said over and over and over again. Fear not, your salvation and eternal life are promised and guaranteed. So on this Affirmation of Baptism Sunday, I want to close with a quote, uh, quote from Martin Luther. And if you can switch to the slide. I don't know if you can read that. The print is a little bit small, but here it is. Luther said, When our sins and our conscience oppress us, we take comfort and say, I am baptized. It is promised to me that I shall be saved and have eternal life in both body and soul. In fact, I want to hear all of you say it, not just the confirmation students. All you who are baptized, I want you to give the answer. When our sins and conscience oppress us, what do we do? We take comfort and say, I am baptized. It is promised to me that I shall be saved and have eternal life, both in soul and body. And all I have to say to that is amen, which means truly. Or as Luther put it, this is most certainly true. Amen. Please rise and join with us.
You may be seated. The following persons have been instructed in the Christian faith and desire today to make public profession thereof. Clinton Couth, Emma Baum, Duke Johnson, Kelly Smith, Matthew Skronsky, Haley Kirsten, Vincent Baum, Lillian Booth, and Andrew Zeinert. Dear friends, we rejoice that you wish to publicly respond yes in faith to the God who said yes to you in your baptism and to pledge to assume an adult responsibility in the life of Christ's church and its mission in the world. In holy baptism, you were joined to the death and resurrection of Christ and made a member of his body, the church. As part of that body, you have heard his word addressed to you received his body and blood, and been empowered by God the Holy Spirit to live as a disciple of Christ. Therefore, I ask you to reject sin and confess and affirm your faith in Christ Jesus. Do you renounce the devil and all the spiritual forces of evil that contend against God and his faithful servants? If so, answer, I do. Do you renounce the influence and power of the world that is contrary to God's word and will? If so, answer, I do. Do you renounce the sin within your own heart, mind, and flesh, and call upon the Lord to deliver you from evil? If so, answer, I do. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? You have made a public profession of your faith. Therefore, I ask, do you intend to continue to live by that faith, to hear God's word and receive the Lord's Supper, to share the good news of salvation in Christ Jesus, and to live as a member of Christ's body, showing forth Christ by what you do and what you say? If so, answer, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. May Almighty God, who has given you the will to publicly confess and pledge to live by the one true faith, grant you the strength and courage so to do, until your faith is met with sight in his glorious kingdom. As St. Paul wrote to Timothy, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called. Confirmands may kneel and parents and godparents are welcome to line up on the side aisles. Heavenly Father, for the sake of Jesus Christ, stir up in Clinton the gift of your Holy Spirit. Strengthen his faith, guide his life, empower him for his vocation, sustain him through suffering, and bring him at last into your everlasting kingdom.
Heavenly Father, for the sake of Jesus Christ, stir up in Duke the gift of your Holy Spirit. Strengthen his faith. Guide his life. Empower him for his vocation. Sustain him through suffering and bring him at last into your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Heavenly Father, for the sake of Jesus Christ, stir up in Matthew the gift of your Holy Spirit. Strengthen his faith, guide his life, empower him for his vocation, sustain him through suffering, and bring him at last into your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Heavenly Father, for the sake of Jesus Christ, stir up in Vincent the gift of your Holy Spirit. Strengthen his faith, guide his life, empower him for his vocation, sustain him through suffering, and bring him at last into your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Heavenly Father, for the sake of Jesus Christ, stir up in Andrew the gift of your Holy Spirit. Strengthen his faith, guide his life, empower him for his vocation, sustain him through suffering, and bring him at last into your everlasting kingdom. Heavenly Father, for the sake of Jesus Christ, stir up in Emma the gift of your Holy Spirit. Strengthen her faith, guide her life, empower her for her vocation, sustain her through suffering, and bring her at last into your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Heavenly Father, for the sake of Jesus Christ, Stir up in Kelly the gift of your Holy Spirit. Strengthen her faith. Guide her life. Empower her for her vocation. Sustain her through suffering and bring her at last into your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Heavenly Father, for the sake of Jesus Christ, stir up in Haley the gift of your Holy Spirit. Strengthen her faith, guide her life, empower her for her vocation, sustain her through suffering, and bring her at last into your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Heavenly Father, for the sake of Jesus Christ, stir up in Lillian the gift of your Holy Spirit. Strengthen her faith, guide her life, empower her for her vocation, sustain her through suffering, and bring her at last into your everlasting kingdom. Amen. The confirmands stand and face the congregation. God created you and saved you from sin, death, and the devil by joining you in baptism to the death and resurrection of his beloved son, Jesus Christ, in whom your eternal salvation is secure. I'm going to have you say that one more time so they can all hear it. Turn and face the front. 
I went in just a little bit different direction with a gift for our confirmands this year. Um, I read a terrific book by Andy Stanley in the last few months, who is the son of uh, Pastor uh, Charles Stanley. Um, this book, I think, gives teaching that they might not get in school, they might not even get at home, but it is critical teaching for their young lives. And actually, parents, when they're done reading it, you read it and talk together about it. It is called The New Rules for Love, Sex, and Dating. And Miss Georgia from 2014 said this, Having experienced more than my fair share of destructive, harmful dating relationships, I can say that Andy's views on these matters are clear and convicting. And um, John Luke Robertson from Duck Dynasty said, if you don't want a marriage like the majority of marriages, then stop dating like the majority of daters. There's new rules in the books. And basically the premise of the book is this, be the person that the person you're looking for is looking for. Got it? Sounds a little bit confusing at first, but be the person that the person you are looking for is looking for. Okay? I'll have you come forward as your names are read to receive your certificates, your book, and a gift from the stewardship committee too, your own box of envelopes. <laughs> Emma Baum. Congratulations, Emma. Haley Kirsten. Congratulations. Vincent Baum. Congratulations. Andrew Zeinert. Congratulations, Drew. Matthew Skronsky. Congratulations. Lillian Booth. Congratulations. Clinton Kauf. Congratulations. Duke Johnson. Congratulations. And Kelly Smith. Congratulations, Kelly. You turn and face the congregation. Dear friends, your 2018 confirmation class. At the conclusion of the service, I'll have the confirmants go out to the uh, rear entrance. Um, hopefully it won't be raining. It looks okay out there, and uh, you're welcome to greet them out there afterwards. You may return to your seats. We join our hearts in prayer. Merciful Heavenly Father, we commend to your care all the children of our congregation that they may grow in grace and in the knowledge of you. Bless them with loving parents and faithful teachers and keep them from danger and harm. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, give us a readiness to share the good news of the forgiveness of sins in Christ Jesus to all who are burdened with the guilt and shame of their sin and grant them believing hearts that will receive your grace with rejoicing and freedom. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we ask your mercy for those who struggle because of mental illness, injury, or disability, that you would tenderly provide for their deepest needs, provide relief for those who care for them, and give them and all of us grace to endure through all trials. Lord, in your mercy. King of kings, 
prevent us from placing our trust in earthly rulers or cultish figures of celebrity or personality and help us to look to you alone, our King and our Father, for all things needful, and to look at and love one another as brothers and sisters, united in and by Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Father, all these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us for the sake of your dear Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, in whose holy name we pray. Amen. We bring forth now our tithes and offerings. We stand and pray together our offertory prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have entrusted us with many things. Help us to be true stewards of all, that we may bring glory to your Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father.
You may be seated. Come at the Lord's invitation and receive his gifts of forgiveness, life, and salvation.
Please rise. And now may the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen you in body and soul, be the entire forgiveness of all your sins, and keep you in true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. A few brief announcements. First, I wanted to say a very heartfelt thank you to Kevin and Karen Zarling for the altar flowers today in honor of our confirmands but even more for their efforts as my small group guides and mentors um, over the last few years. Ask them, if you see them, about the benefits of being one of these mentors and small group guides and consider becoming one yourself um, in the years ahead for confirmation. On the calendar for Tuesday, I see softball listed. So there's a game at 6.30. Apparently we've got enough people to form a softball team that's at Buchholz Park. 6.30 on Tuesday. Uh, Vacation Bible School begins tomorrow, and we are still in need of some volunteers, especially for games and for classroom guides and helpers. So if you're able to uh, help us out Monday through Friday from around 8 o'clock until just before noon. And also uh, Thursday, associated with VBS is a potluck out at the church camp, not only for vacation Bible schoolers and parents, but for the whole congregation. Come on out, and I'm sure the kids will have some songs and maybe a skit to, uh, to perform from their week in VBS. I'd encourage you to browse through your parish news for information on uh, other upcoming events in the days and weeks ahead. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please remain standing and join us.